Hi everyone. Now, bizarrely, this video is for parents because I was speaking to a lovely lady recently and she was after some tuition for her children and she made me realise how confusing it is for you guys trying to understand what your students are doing at school and what qualifications they'll actually be getting and how this is actually going to take place. And I thought it would be a great idea to make a video which basically clears up all the confusion and makes it far clearer. So we're going to talk today about the IGCSE Edexcel examination. Now, just to let you know, Edexcel is simply a business and it's a business which provides schools with exams. So effectively, the schools pay Edexcel and they purchase their examination papers. So there are lots of different examples and for one reason or another, your school has chosen Edexcel. Now, there is a second IGCSE qualification, which is the Cambridge Board CIE, and please make sure you're not following what I'm saying in this video if your child is studying the Cambridge examination system. That is a completely different system. Yes, you get the same qualification at the end of it, but you will be tested in a very different way. So please watch out for that video. This is not the right video for you guys. This is for IGCSE Edexcel people alone and your examination follows a very specific format, one that differs hugely from CIE. So look out for that video. Now, just to really clear everything up, in Britain, when you're 16 years old, you sit your GCSEs, and that is basically a standardized examination system which lines everyone up and basically says, this is how this person is doing. Whether you agree with this sort of examination, that's a totally different point. But in the UK, everyone has to sit it and effectively you need those grades to go off and do whatever it is you want to do when you're older and it will help dictate what job you can get. So the GCSE actually stands for the General Certificate of Secondary Education. I stands for International. So effectively the International GCSE is an exam created for students that are not based in the UK. Now bizarrely many schools in the UK, particularly independent or private schools, will actually choose to give this examination to their students. Now, I'm not sure why this is, but the point is, there's been some stuff in the news about IGCSEs being easier than GCSEs, and that is ridiculous. And it's really offensive to everyone sitting in these exams. They're difficult. The IGCSE and the GCSE are directly comparable. One is not more difficult than the other, and the people who write these sorts of articles are not doing their job properly because they have not researched and they have not sat these exams. Having prepared students for both sets of exams, I can say that they're both difficult and not one of them is more difficult than the other. Let's now talk about the structure. Now, there is no coursework within this examination system. Your child's grade relies entirely on how well they do in the exam. And there are two exam papers, paper one and paper two. So you will sit a paper one in biology, chemistry and physics. That will be sat in mid-May, then there'll be a little pause for half term, a little break, and then you'll sit paper two in biology, physics and chemistry. And together, those two papers make up your grade for chemistry, two papers make up your grade for biology, two papers make up your grade for physics. Notice that the first paper, paper one, is two hours long, it's worth 110 marks, and it makes up around 60% of your final grade. Now, the next thing to be aware of is that if you are a double candidate, ordinarily you'll just be sitting the paper ones. So once you've sat your paper ones, you'll be done. And then you'll receive two IGCSE certifications, even though you've studied three sciences. The way they weight it means that you get two IGCSEs out of it. However, some schools slightly change it and they think, you know what, it would be easier if my students only studied two of the sciences rather than all three. In that case, you'll be expected to sit paper one and paper two, and hopefully you can see that you're effectively doing the same amount of work. They just weighted it differently, so they want you to do more biology and chemistry. They don't want you to do any physics. Maybe other schools want you to study all three sciences, but you'll do less content for each, so you'll sit only paper one. This is something you'll have to check with your school, but to let you know, the normal way of doing it is to just do all three sciences and sit only paper one. And that's if you're doing double award, triple students, unfortunately for you, you'll need to know everything. Now, how do you understand what content you need for paper one and paper two? Now, this is where people misunderstand. Effectively, if you are sitting paper one, 
you effectively need to know everything in your specification that is not in bold. So every single point you need to know or be able to understand that point. And, and so all that non-bolded text could be examined in paper one and you need to be prepared for that. Now paper two includes everything. So that's both the non-bolded text and the bolded text. And that's why it's quite difficult for you guys because you've learnt it all for the first paper, but there's a pause of about three weeks. And then all of a sudden you're going to be examined again and the same stuff could come up in the paper too. And that's what makes the IGCSE at Excel qualification quite difficult. In addition to that, you're going to have to learn all the text which is in bold because that could be examined in paper two. Notice double and dual award students, you will never be examined on that bold text. Don't learn those things. They will not be coming up in paper one. And actually, hopefully you'll understand that when you look at past paper questions, you'll sometimes see the start of the paper and it says double award on the top. And I get a lot of triple students going, this isn't relevant for me. I'm so confused. I don't understand. No, no, no. What we're saying is that paper one is suitable for everyone. And for some reason, they've decided to label that as double award just to make it super clear for the double students. However, triple students, you will have to sit in that paper plus the additional paper two. Now, if this is sounding super hard, remember my videos, my all-in-one videos, they're the most popular videos on my channel. I have already broken it down for you. So if you're double award or paper one or triple award students, you can make sure you're watching that video. If you're focusing in on preparing for your paper two, so that will be triple award students, make sure you watch that video. You don't want to learn any extra information that is unnecessary if you're only sitting the paper one. Please notice that with IGCSE at Excel, there's no higher and lower tier as there is with other exam boards. This is a way of differentiating very strong candidates from students that are focused on other subjects or don't want to do as much scientific work. That does not exist for at Excel. So if you find your teacher talking about that, you need to ask them, you need to double check that you are sitting IGCSE at Excel because there is no foundation tier, which basically means there's no cap on how well you can do. The highest grade available is the grade nine or the A star. Now, don't worry too much about the numbers versus the letters thing. The exam boards can't make up their mind in terms of how they want to actually give you the qualification. Fundamentally, it's the same. Future employees will not care if you have an A star or a nine. It tells them equally that you are an exceptional scientist. So please don't get hung up on that. It's just these silly things the exam boards do. They sometimes try and alter it. It doesn't change what your qualification actually means.